You're watching World Inside on CCTV News. The label Made in China may someday be replaced by Innovated in China. In recent years, some remarkable innovation has come out of China to be highlighted worldwide. The latest government work report also says that the country will continue to build first-class national science centers and technological innovation hubs. But some difficulties do lie ahead, and experts say a new way of thinking is needed. Fruitful development. In the past few years, we have seen significant growth in China's technological innovation capability. Major achievements have been marked. China received its first Nobel Prize in Medicine last October, awarded to the 84-year-old scientist Tu Youyou for discovering artemisinin. Tianhe Tu, a supercomputer developed by China, has defended its position as the world's number one system in the latest top 500 list of the world's most powerful supercomputers. And the release of China's C919 plane was cheered by many in the country. Made in China finally has a new meaning. In a press conference, China's Minister of Science and Technology said that new measures will be carried out in line with the 13th five-year plan in the future. First, led by key projects in science and technology innovation 2030 to cultivate continuing innovation capability. Second, to form a low-cost, high-efficiency service network for innovation and entrepreneurship. Third, to set up modernized industrial and technology system. Fourth, deepening reform to elevate innovation capabilities. However, one admitted that there are hurdles ahead. China's science sector suffers from a lack of originality and innovation. This is in part due to restrictive policies that do not promote innovation and some outdated institutional mechanisms. But the new measures demonstrate a desire for true reform. Is a new era beginning for China's technology sector? Well, even as we cheer on China's scientific achievements in the year 2015, we can't help but ask, how should we facilitate more creativity in science and technology? When will China make its name as a source of innovation? Probably when children begin to dream of being scientists rather than celebrities. For more answers, I spoke to Chen Zhangliang, who is a bioscientist and now vice chairman of the China Association for Science and Technology. First, we talk about his childhood idol, a mathematician, Chen Jingren. Uh, it seems to me like uh, the things happened in 1987. Well, at that time, I was really excited with a, a, a report written by Xu Ci. I still remember the name of the book called uh, Go Back, Conjecture. And that really bring me into science area. It was about a Chinese mathematician. Yeah, Chen Jingluan. Chen Jingluan. My hometown, my hometown person oh, uh, from Fujian that? province. That's and right. uh, oh, we are in the same town. And he was so smart enough to solve the problem, very difficult mathematics problem. Mm -hmm. And that fascinated me a lot. And I really entered science area because of his influence. And today, um, I can feel the environment in China. Sounds like that, that time, people are very uh, enthusiastic in innovation. So science became very popular today. I love the environment because this is uh, really a kind of hopeful to our country in the future. I understand there are already 13,000 something like startups being built every day in China? Yes, uh, I checked the, um, our premier reports. There is over 12,000 new companies built each day in China. We are talking about 12,000. <laughs> so I can feel many young people. And uh, it's sometimes the technology is very simple. I don't feel like uh, that technology could make money, but they are happy to make money, you know, they just get together. I found one, one, one company which is about like uh, uh, 10, 10 undergraduate students. They get together and to f just do one small tiny business. You know what business? What is it? Um, they ask universities in Beijing and Shanghai, whatever, the, our country university. And they found about 20 students in each university and then announced in the country to every high school kids, 
if you want to talk to any uh, students in any universities, you have right to talk to them. So they find the niche and they build their own company. Yeah, the kind of network, networking company. It's, it's very easy. It's however, bad. however, you know what happened? What happened was they found that over 10,000 students every day started to communicate with each other. So the network built. Innovation. It's been a major component of Premier Li Keqiang's government report at the annual National People's Congress. He stressed that we should strive to achieve major breakthroughs in basic research, applied research, and research in strategic and frontier fields by 2020. China's investment in research and development is expected to reach 2.5 percent of GDP, and the contribution of scientific and technological advances towards economic growth should come to 60 percent. Fulfilling these objectives will turn China into an innovative and talent-rich country. But improving the efficiency of R&D remains a challenge. China is facing a situation where 77 percent of its 1.4 trillion yuan's worth of R&D investment comes from the private sector instead of universities and institutes. That's mainly because the approval processes are too long, experts say. By the time new technology hits the market, demand has often already changed. So implementing major reforms may be a major task in the future. One part in society, so many young people get into a new business. Another part, the researchers in university, in research institute, in academy, somehow not that excited. Why? Why is that, do you think? So we, we have a study on that, and we found a couple of things. Number one, the evaluation system for researchers, for scientists in China. The professor in the university, if you're a young professor, you have a research project, you have funding, good, you find a gene. Then you get excited. You know that the gene related to diabetes, the gene related to cancer disease, the gene related to high yield in rice or wheat or corn. So you got a new discovery. Now in China, most important things for researchers quickly kick a paper out to publish paper. And then paper you have to publish in the best journal in the world. Then you got a chance to promote it to associate professor in Beida or Tsinghua, any university. Now when you are an associate professor, you got more funding, you got more student, you push real hard to kick another paper, good paper out. <laughs> So paper you need a paper, paper. A paper. It's a paper you got, you got a papers? Good. Now you got a professor. Now then, what to do? Still need to work hard to have a big discovery. Then have a good paper. Then you got a paper published in our area, published in, in a science or in nature. They're the two best journals. Right. Then you got a good chance to be an academician. In the evaluation system, you don't tell a professor in case you have a good gene, that gene, if you can make into drugs later, it produces the protein. Then the protein could cure diabetes or cure cancer disease. Then we come, you, still a good contribution that you can be a professor. Unfortunately, in our system, we don't have that evaluation. We need to change it, somehow to change right. this society. Because this system, and so many young junior scientists push very hard in science, in research, somehow lack the brain to get into the, to go into development. Number, this is, we found that problem one. Problem two, that we don't have the budget, we don't have money to go into the development. We have money in uh, R, research, R and D, but very limited funding in development. However, the good thing is, Premier Li Keqiang announced in this meeting, say that he's going to increase R&D budget to 2.5% by year, 2020. 2.5% of GDP. 2.5% of total GDP by year 2020. This is good news. But it's not just the role of the government in terms of increasing mm. the budget for scientific yeah. research. It's also about how well, to public, innovate, public. how to motivate mm. the public to participate, the business community. You are absolutely right. So one, I say, is government investment, not enough. Second is somehow that we 
the country did not build in a system to encourage the private sector to put the money in. Uh, today we have 2.09% of our GDP. I found that so much different, we discovered after research, so much different 10 years ago and this year. 10 years ago, our GD, our R&D budget no more than 1.2%, 1, 1.5%. 1 but today, why the suddenly we found it's 2.09%? That's because in past 10 years, somehow government pay attention to the private company to invest in R&D. But what, but what the research results show that it's not enough. Country need to encourage more companies to put the money in, right. especially stay on enterprises. Number one, number two, and number three, the one that is how to make sure that the inventor, that the, that the scientist, their benefit, uh, you have your discovery. So you say that you can move into the industrial, move into company, you can spin off. So doing a development work, nice. However, the, our system, somehow the government have a regula regulation. So for IP, you can put into the company. Before, like, well, the year ago, you are not allowed to get over 10% of our company uh, shares. But the question is, we know these problems. Well, it's changing now. Are, are these problems likely to change in the short term? I know that government finally decided to announce a new regulation for R&D, allowing scientists to own over 50% of company shares. Right. Depends your negotiation. And that's good. That, that's very good. So uh, in the last months, the announcement by government, how to encourage uh, scientists spin off your technology. They have a sixth regulation, beautiful regulation. So I feel in the future you will have a big changes in R&D area. But you know, even with all of these conditions that you have said met, there's still the issue of IPR protection, for example, right. whether intellectual property rights are going to be genuinely respected. Somehow, the historically, we did not pay that much attention to IPR. So as a researchers, if you discover a gene, a protein, could be used as a drug. Any time you spend so much amount of money and time to do it, and then somehow in the market, you will quickly find the copy. The copy right. of the products in the market. So what can we do? And so only since is we are hoping the country, the government can pay more attention to IPR. There are a lot of different areas of basic research, but many wonder where are the areas that China should focus attention on? Uh, I would say that after such a big investment by the government in R&D and also society's investment, my feeling is that uh, in next 10 or 20 years, it's golden age for Chinese science and development. Today we have over capacity of some, some industrial products. Uh, we all know that. Meanwhile, we know that something is not enough. So we know that many high technology products, we're still importing. Like what? So we import the chips. But meanwhile, not only, not only the chips, do you know that like an engine. We know, we always talk, we're talking about like an airplane, like a jet. We have 919 jet but remember the engine still we need to import the engine GE's engine or whatever the country engine automobile engine airplane engine jet airplane engine so it's high-tech products right so I was I, I can feel in the future in China in high technology area we have a big breakthrough one that is biotechnology biotechnology one in agriculture biotechnology like a GM, genetic modified organism, or like a um, molecular based on breeding. We have a new variety right. of, against insects, against drought, against cold, against salt, and with a good quality, better quality. That biotechnology in agriculture. Then we have good biotechnology in pharmaceutical. More drugs will show up, including uh, 
drugs against different cancer diseases, against blood, blood vascular diseases, against uh, diabetes, against uh, many virus infection. I can feel many new drugs will show up in our country. So biotechnology, second would be, second would be information technology, like 3G, 4G, 5G. Those internet and communication will be a big breakthrough. Now, in information technology, one work that China is in very advanced level, that's quantum communication. I see. I would say the quantum communication, China will lead the world in some area. So the second technology called information technology. Number three technology I, I can see is met, new material, new material technology. And this show it will have a big impact in the world. Right. And China will follow up quickly. Uh, one, one new material called graphene. The graphene is kind of like a, a magic material. It can do so much things. It is still some difficult in obtain a, the graphene, the good graphene. But if we have a break, big breakthrough in the graphene, it will change many things in the industrial. So new material. And nanometer, nanometer technology, nanotech, nanotech uh, those materials obviously is important. Number four, it will be a, a, should be a new energy. Mm. New energy, today we have solar, solar energy, we have wind energy. We have, my, maybe we have more new energy, right. safe energy, clean energy. It certainly will be the future in, in China. Then um, in a space technology, space technology, um, space station, landing the moon, mm -hmm. possible in Mars, the all possible. Professor Chen, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very much. all the best.